foodies. So I'm taking you back in time to the year 2000 where I was taking my kids even further back in time to the 1950s and 60s at our local Dog and Suds restaurant. Now at their peak, they had 650 restaurants all over the Midwest. They are the you know quintessential 1950s, 60s car hop, drive-in type of restaurant. And as you can see here, um, the, you know, the local men would bring in their muscle cars and kind of reenact that era. So it was a lot of fun. And one of the most popular dishes on their menu is their Coney Island uh, hot dog sauce. And they also put it on their Texas burger, um, which is a combination of that sauce plus a secret sauce, like a Big Mac sauce almost. Um, so anyway, there's only 16 restaurants left and uh, four in Illinois and we were lucky enough to live near two of them and a friend of mine requested this because he no longer does JJ lives now in Alabama so I'm making this for him okay guys so I'm gonna start out by browning some ground beef and listen you don't want to use like grass-fed organic 94% fat free you want to use what a you know a fast food restaurant or you know a, a a restaurant that caters to junky food probably uses which is your higher fat hamburger so use an 80 20 at you know at the minimum but i use, i'm using a 70 30 here for the most flavor so it will uh shrink a great deal and of course you are going to be draining it when you're done i added some minced onion and the trick with this is that you really want to you want to take a fork and you want to crumble this meat. You do not want it to look like, you know, like a chili meat or even a, a bolognese or a spaghetti meat sauce. You definitely want the meat to be very small. Um, as you can see, I have been continuing to do that. So, because this is it, it, it's not supposed to be like a chili per se. So just keep taking your fork. You can actually use an electric mixer, I heard. I thought about the food processor, but then I didn't want it to turn into paste. That would be disgusting. So uh, just stick with the tried and true, use a fork, and just crumble, crumble, crumble. Now I'm adding the ingredients for the sauce. Here's some brown sugar and some white sugar. If you are anti-sugar, do not make this because substituting or omitting it, it just will not taste like dog and suds, which is a sweeter sauce. Now I'm adding some mustard. So yeah, this is one of those things you just cannot... Apple cider vinegar. You can't, you know, use honey in lieu of it. A little bit of water. Or stevia, or, you know, anything like that. Uh, some Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, share, share. It's in everything. Seriously. And I'm putting it on about one fourth of a teaspoon of Tabasco. Now I looked all over the internet for this particular, that's uh, wait, celery seed, salt and pepper for dog and suds, right? So I, I did make a Coney Island sauce that I found on a recipe site a couple of years ago and I didn't like it and it didn't taste anything like dog and suds. So I went and I looked specifically for dog and suds and honestly there's only like two recipes over the entire internet as a copycat like they have this recipe on lock so I went to the comment section because that's where you're gonna find the reviews and you know tips and tricks and people who may have even worked there and lo and behold I did so I tweaked this a little bit uh, there's some tomato sauce after I've mixed up all the ingredients you're gonna add tomato sauce and here's some ketchup so I tweak this to uh, everything that I read. Oh, that, that's a hard-boiled eggshell from leftover from the deviled eggs I made for tomorrow's dinner for Thanksgiving. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Uh, I've been cooking all day, so if this comes out sounding a little crazy, well, it's because I am. That was chili sauce, and this is barbecue sauce. I'm using my own that I make, which is a hickory-based, but rumor has it that dog and suds uses open pit barbecue sauce now i don't know because in many of the recipes online or you know the two recipes online that's copied everywhere they don't even mention barbecue sauce but an employee did so i i, I went with it that and the chili sauce 
<clears throat> so now you're going to mix it up as I'm doing here and you're going to want this to simmer on the stove on very low heat for about an hour. Yes, an hour. Um, so this is a sauce that you definitely are going to have to babysit because it will um, evaporate down very quickly and you don't want that to happen. You Obviously you don't want to burn the sauce but you also want to keep it and you're going to cover it um, halfway. You're not going to fully cover it. Uh, so you're going to want to keep it saucy. You're not going to want it to end up being thick. See that's almost too thick right there. That's more like a sloppy joe consistency. You, you actually want it to be a little bit more saucy than that. So you can add water and that's what the directions say to do. And don't fear if you put too much water in, that's okay because it will, like I said, evaporate down. So you just got to keep looking at it, keep adding water if necessary, um, as I'm doing here, and let it go. Now, at, at about 45 minutes, I start my water for the hot dogs because I boil my hot dogs. I can't stand them barbecued or fried. Ugh, gross. So I um, get my water ready to go and I found a, a nice little hack there to do the halfway because it's, it's kind of kind of uh, tricky doing a half closed half open pan I assume that the directions are that way for a reason I use Hebrew National or Nathan's I like the 100% kosher beef hot dogs those are the only ones I will eat so in that aspect I'm being a food snob so but the hamburger meat yeah you definitely have to have higher fat content and it's cheaper anyway so this is pretty much the the consistency that you want for the sauce this is actually okay now the, this is a little bit too much water but it will reduce down in a couple of minutes so it'll be perfect for me in a few minutes when I serve it up but yeah that's looking really good and here we are and I like it with onion and mustard of course it's your stuff so serve it however you want and that's for my grand puppy. That's just plain hamburger, plain hot dog, and some white rice. Plain white rice. So she's getting doggy suds. Let's see how Ivy likes it. We get her this weekend while my daughter's out of town. And oh, it looks like she's loving, the dog is loving the dog and suds. Yes. Oh, she goes for the hot dog first, like we all do. Good girl. Yep. She's digging it. Okay, let's see. Let's see what my other baby thinks. Here comes JR's dog and suds. And of course, he's grown up with, with dog and suds as well. So oh, I need to get him a fork. It looks like that's gonna. Oh, it is really messy. Just FYI, napkins and fork. Yep. <laughs> gonna need that but so worth it babe how's it taste does it taste like dog and suds yes just like it mm. Mm -hmm. like perfect like it perfect okay don't film me eating <laughs> too late <laughs>